Nero. Nero Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus. Possibly one of the most infamous rulers in all of Roman history, known for murder and extravagance. His coins, however, tell a different story. This is the story of Nero according to most history books. He became emperor at only 17, alongside his domineering mother, Agrippina, who he murdered five years later after getting tired of her interference. He also killed those who accused him of treason, his first wife, and the husband of the woman who would become his second wife. His generals won a war with Parthia while he ruled, but the Great Fire in 64 AD overwhelmed this victory. Nero has been widely suspected of starting the fire and fiddling while Rome burned, though he is said to have blamed and executed Christians for it. He devalued coinage and raised taxes after the fire, which led to rebellion. He was ultimately declared a public enemy and sentenced to die on a cross under the whip. He killed himself to avoid this fate, ending a cruel 13-year rule. However, these are history books written almost 2,000 years after Nero's death. Not much was written that survived from his reign, but we do still have his coins. Due to his intense interest in the arts, it's reasonable to believe that he chose many of his own coin designs, which gives us a glimpse into what he felt was important and how he wanted history to remember him. At the start of his reign, there are many different coins featuring him and his mother, Agrippina. She was very politically involved and had strategically married, and likely poisoned, the previous emperor to get Nero on the throne. It seems that she thought she could control her young son. However, this backfired. He didn't inarguably have her assassinated. Just a year later, he introduced a new series of coins, including some featuring Virtus on the reverse, who represented bravery, strength, and virtue. This may seem inappropriate in the context of Agrippina's murder, but historians of the time tell us it was not so. According to the writings of Tacitus, Nero was congratulated on having escaped an unforeseen danger and his mother's daring crime, though Nero himself seemed sad and almost angry at his own deliverance and shed tears over his mother's death. Perhaps these coins were to celebrate the elimination of a threat to the empire. While possible, they were more likely an attempt to draw public attention away from the matricide and to celebrate a military victory in Britain over the Druids. Overall, the foreign relations aspect of Nero's reign was very successful. After a victory over Parthia in 63, little celebrated by modern historians, Nero closed the Temple of Janus, as depicted on this coin. This temple was closed during times of complete peace in the Roman Empire, and it remained closed for over 50 years. This was only the sixth time in history that it had been closed, marking a major victory for Nero's reign. One of the aspects of Nero's life heavily emphasized on his coinage and merely mentioned in passing by the history books is his love of the arts. He loved horse racing, to a degree that was seen unfit for an emperor. He began driving chariots publicly in 59 AD and continued through the end of his reign, spending quite a bit of his last two years in Greece. To justify this obsession, Nero as a horseman was depicted on his coins in a way that related it back to the utility of good horsemanship in war. In addition to horses, Nero had quite an affinity for the arts that was seen as unfit for an emperor. He adored acting, singing, poetry, and music. He would perform in plays as a beggar, a runaway slave, and a pregnant woman. These activities were more shocking and appalling to the Roman nobility than his murders or the questionable morality of his personal life. He enjoyed these pursuits so publicly that the government had to address them, which they did through coinage. These pieces show Apollo playing the lyre, an instrument Nero was also known to play. This image had only appeared on a coin once before, on an issue of Augustus, who was highly respected. He had used it to thank Apollo for a military victory, but the hope was for the issue under Nero to remind the people that Augustus was a supporter of the arts, just like Nero, ignoring the differences between them. One of the defining events of Nero's reign was the Great Fire of 64 AD, which destroyed two-thirds of Rome over the course of nine days. While his coinage makes no comment on how the fire started, it does reflect some of Nero's work to rebuild Rome afterwards. The raised taxes that ultimately led to rebellion were initiated in order to fund the rebuilding of the city. He rebuilt the Temple of Vesta, originally constructed under Augustus, and created the Provision Market, or Mycelum Augusti. It's been said that Nero put great efforts into relief programs after the fire, reducing the price of food and opening up royal grounds for those left homeless. Before the fire, his coins celebrated his generosity. 
One of the main functions of the emperor was to ensure the empire had food, and Nero put much effort into ensuring he was seen as generous. Nero's coinage depicts a ruler who loved the arts, who brought peace to his people, who did everything he could to rebuild in a time of crisis. The truth is likely somewhere between the stories told in the history books and that struck on his coins, but looking at his coinage unveils aspects of his reign that are ignored in most accounts. This can be said about many other emperors as well. There are secret meanings contained in every ancient coin. Each one is a story waiting to be told.